Straight Talk from Israel. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. Why the panic? Why now? That's what we're going to be talking about. And to tell you the truth, folks, I have no idea. (laughs) No idea what we're going to be talking about. What panic? What panic? Well, I can imagine with Israel now on the verge of going to new elections yet again. We're just on the verge of it. It's already been passed in a preliminary vote, and again, and it's got to be, I think, another vote or so, and then we will for sure be going to new elections. But right now, as it stands, that's what they're saying, that the government cannot pass the budget, therefore, because each party in the blue and white and Likud and Netanyahu and Benny Gantz, they are not getting along, that each one blame the other, why the budget can't be passed past, each one telling the other to compromise, neither compromising. It looks like we may be going to new elections, but who can tell? Things change at the drop of a hat here. You go to sleep thinking one thing, you wake up in the morning. It's a completely different reality. And what about in the United States? Still no official, no official decision on who the president of the United States is. So far, U.S. President Donald Trump has not conceded. He is still fighting for uh, the election to prove that there was voter fraud. We've seen footage on television of them doing things that (laughs) look very criminal, how there cannot be voter fraud uh, admitted to in the courts, I don't know. But we shall see what happens. We shall see. So far, uh, Joe Biden is getting his cabinet and his government ready. He believes he's going to be stepping into that place in January, and he may well indeed. We, we, we shall see. And um, so we're going to be talking about all of this in the show. You can call in as well. And I want to say hi to everybody who's listening in from all over the world, from all over the United States and Israel, Canada, Australia and the land down under, France, the Netherlands, Puerto Rico, and other places as well around the world. Thank you for listening in and consider partnering with us and donating to the station. You can go to our website at IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com and press on the donate button or partner with us. How did a nice Jewish girl from Delaware end up living in Israel? Shalom, I'm Natalie Sapinski. Join me on my show, Returning Home. Meet different people who have moved to Israel. Hear their personal stories, their highs, their lows, and everything in between. Each week, we talk to experts on immigration and the process of moving to Israel. Listen to Returning Home every Thursday, only on Israel News Talk Radio. Why the panic and why now? Now, when I invited my guests on the show today, I had in mind that I wanted to talk about the possibility of going to new elections here in Israel. What that means if we do, who's going to divide up into what camps, who's going to be against who, who might get elected, etc., etc. And also, he suggested that we connect it with the election results of what's happening in the United States. And so I said, fine, what should we title it? And he says, why the panic and why now? And I said, is that in accordance with the elections? And I got my answer while we were off the air. Oh, I'm so happy. He said the answer is yes. Okay, so we're on track. <laughs> and so with no further ado, let me introduce my guest. We have joining us Dr. Mordechai ben Menachem. He's a researcher, former lecturer at Ben Gurion University, and has authored over 70 books and 400 research papers on science, history, and more. He commentates on Mideast and world issues. Welcome to the show, Dr. Mordechai ben Menachem. Thank you. Thank you for having me. 
All right. So uh, let's start out with Israel, uh, because the big news here the past few days has been that the Knesset had a preliminary vote to dissolve the Knesset because they can't get their acts together and agree on a budget. Each one pointing to the other, saying it's their fault that there's no agreement made. You need to compromise. No, you need to compromise. And in in the meantime, no one is compromising. Where do we stand? Where would you like to take us? Uh, there's so many places we can start here that it's that it's almost uh, it, it's almost humorous uh, if it wasn't so pathetic. Um, first of all, I have to say that there has never in, in 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 history of any democracy been an instance never in all of history when a general made a reasonable politician. They always fail because it's a totally different mindset. A general is somebody who gives orders. A politician is somebody who negotiates and makes compromises. Politics is all about constant compromise, and you have to know how to do it. I don't know how to do it. I'm not a politician. I'm a scientist. I don't under, I, I don't. Okay, so right now we have in the government a prime minister who is a politician through and through. Hang on. And we have a general. He was the chief of staff of the IDF. So we have a general and a politician sharing the same... Uh, government. Correct. And of course, the general is incapable of compromise. He has been all along since the moment he entered politics. He's been ca- incapable of compromise. He wasn't capable of 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 dealing at any at any level of negotiations during the election cycle or after the election cycle to form the government. He, he doesn't know how to do that. So then are it's you blaming even, this, uh, the, the dissolving of the government that, on that, Benny Gantz? I'm sorry? I'm asking, so therefore, are you blaming the dissolving of the Knesset, of the government, on Benny Gantz from the Blue and White Party? Well, if you really want, if you really want to know, I'm blaming the problem with the government not on Benny Gantz because he's, so, he's, he, he's actually just... Uh, 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 an incompetent puppet. I'm blaming it on on Pelosi and and Schumer because they're the ones who influenced incorrectly, illegally, both against Israeli law and against American law, the elections of the of the, the pre the, the the previous three elections cycles that we had before they stole votes. From Netanyahu, I have no doubt whatsoever that those elections were stolen, but they didn't. They weren't capable of stealing it sufficiently. Pardon me, quote unquote, to get Netanyahu to see him. He's too popular, so they had to try to compromise. Wait a second. Uh, Wait. Stop for a moment, Mordechai. You have to explain to our listeners. You're saying that Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer meddled in. Israeli elections trying to get Benny Gantz in and BB out. Well, I, that's what I said, but I should I should actually I should actually uh, uh, um, uh, uh, rephrase that. I, ju- I shouldn't say Pelosi and Schumer by name. I should say the American Democrat establishment, the establishment of the so-called United States deep state. But if that's if if you accept that rephrasing, then the answer is affirmative. Yes. But we don't they, use the same voting methods that they do in the United States. Here we have people who count the votes. We don't have machines like they do in the states that are compromised or could be you're compromised. You're absolutely correct. Um, but what you're not taking into account is that voting is a many-layered process. It's not just the counting of the individual paper ballots, but it's also the tabulation of them afterwards and the uh, 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 the issues t- uh, in the United States that you're hearing about in the news concerning Dominion and and and, and Smartmatic are the votes that are the uh, pardon me the, the machines that count the votes. Well, I'm talking about hammer and scorecard that tabulate the votes. And when you say that, you and mean like saying, CIA let's say, ju- um, and specifically designed to steal foreign elections. So. So you're you're saying that it's the the cheating, uh, if there is, is not in the counting of the votes, but it's in the tallying. So if they have, let's say, 
uh, 30 polling stations in Jerusalem and 30 in Tel Aviv, et cetera, et cetera. Those results are when they add them together, that's where the cheating is taking place, if so? Correct. And that's done by a machine here in Israel? The tallying? That is done by computer, yes. By computer. And you believe that the same types of cheating that is believed to have gone on in the U.S. elections, you believe has gone on here in the last few Israeli elections? First of all, I said the last three. And secondly, it, it, it's, it's, again, you have to be careful when you, when you say the same type. In, in America, they're using a, a large... Uh, 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 a, ra- uh, uh, a range of different um, uh, systems for cheating, from uh, people that are dead voting to uh, you know inflating the 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 rolls, uh, um, uh, uh, the voter rolls of creating votes that didn't exist, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, all sorts of things like that. None of those are relevant here, and I'm not saying that any of those occurred here. What I'm saying is that there are American systems called hammer and scorecard designed by the CIA specifically for the purpose of stealing foreign elections. And that's known fact that was that were, these software systems were moved from the CIA to the White House under Obama and under Trump. They were moved out of the White House and they were absconded. In other words, they do not know where they are now. The, the Trump White House was not aware that they were brought into a far into a um, uh, um, uh, 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 an outside entity during the last days of the Obama administration. Okay, hold that thought and for they a were moment. Used in an attempt to. Okay, Mordechai, hold that thought for a moment. We're going. Sorry? We have a caller. We have joining us Mike from. The occupied territories of Los Angeles. Hi, Mike. What's your <laughs> comment or question? Uh, hi. Uh, thank you for having me. I think the United States election has a big effect on Israel. You know, Biden is a great friend of Israel, and Trump must pave the way for Biden to begin the war. You know, I do think Trump should concede and con- uh, con- congratulate John Kerry. Uh, and uh, Biden, uh, and uh, he shouldn't make America chaotic. I believe Trump is a bully and ir- irrational man uh, than just thinking about of himself and his politician, uh, political interest. Uh, he even not able to concede the election result, and uh, it has challenged shaky democracy in America. Uh, you know, another important issue to me is that uh, Trump has planned to pardon himself and his family. I believe this is disgust, disgusting and shameful, and uh, Trump uh, uh, is assaulting our democracy with uh, his stupid action. Uh, okay. I wanna, uh, hear your idea about these two issues. Okay. Well, you know what? You are entitled to your own opinion, and you can believe whatever you like. However, I, as an Israeli, can tell you that I do not believe that Biden is a friend of Israel. You can say so. It doesn't make it so. He has served under Obama. I remember when he came over here to Israel, he was arrogant to Israel. He is uh, against the, the policies that Trump has has uh, Im- implemented that have helped Israel tremendously and acknowledged Israel's sovereignty here. And, you know, again, you can believe what you like, and I'm happy that you called in to share your opinion, but I disagree as an Israeli completely. Mordechai, would you like to weigh in in the last minute that we have in this segment? Um, there's not really much to add. Again, as you said, the, the gentleman has, has, has his right to his opinion, and I respect that completely. I, I, of course, I, I agree with you, just as probably about 90% of Israelis do. Um, Trump was the was clearly, in terms of foreign policy, not only for Israel, but for the entire Middle East, and I believe for the, for the entire world, was probably 
the most strategic thinking president in the history of the United States. Right. And, you know, also we see that Biden wants to bring back the two-state solution, which has been a terrible, bloody, and murderous failure for both uh, populations. And it, it is terrible. And to, and to not recognize that is extremely foolish if not uh, the people don't have very much intelligence. I have, I hate to say it, but, you know, you just look at it. All right. So uh, we're going to a break now. When we get back, we'll be talking more about this. Again, uh, we're speaking with Dr. Mordechai ben Menachem. We're talking about the elections on both sides of the pond and their similarities, what they have to do with each other. We'll be right back. Shalom, everybody. Making a difference often takes just one moment and one person at a time. I am Orly Benny Davis, your show host on Israel News Talk Radios from Jerusalem with love. You'll be hearing people talking about politics, religion, social issues, and making a better tomorrow. Join me, Orly Benny Davis, for God and Country. From Jerusalem with love. Wednesdays on Israel News Talk Radio. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Did you know this psalm and many others were composed by a Jewish shepherd and musician who later became a king? Would you like to know some of the inner meanings of psalms to help you connect with God and strengthen your soul? An exciting and easy to read book is now available which will help you do just that. Software for the Soul, Psalms for Everyone, available on Kindle, Audible, and Amazon.com. Software for the Soul. All right. We are back here at the Tamar Yona Show on IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. And the topic is, why the panic and why now? What do the Israeli elections and the American elections have to do with each other? Our guest is Dr. Mordechai Ben Menachem. And uh, you are invited to call in at any time to weigh in on the issue. And uh, Rabbi Dr. Mordechai Ben Menachem, can we go to a caller, another caller? Certainly. Okay, we have joining us Antonio from the Hi, settlement of Washington, D.C. Hi there, Antonio. Hi, Yoda. How are you doing today? Great. How are you? I'm blessed. Okay, yes. We are blessed to have you as well. Go ahead, Antonio. My, I like to make a comment regarding the, um, the previous caller to set things straight. Trump is a supporter for, um, for Israel. Biden is not. Biden is a thief. He stole through college. He lied and so forth. And he lied so many times. He is not, my, his mindset is not, he should be president. He took something or tried to take something that's not him, not his. And so he, you know, just because the media say you're president-elect doesn't mean that you're president-elect. So Trump has a right to, to go through all this because he won, period, no, no exception. Number two, if you look at um, how King David, um, King Solomon, uh, and I think his son, I don't I cannot pronounce his name correctly, try to take the kingship from King Solomon. The same thing is happening right now. The outcome is going to be the same. And another thing is... Wait, like, wait, stop for a moment, for Antonio. Because, Antonio, just I'm a minute. Sorry. When you say the outcome is going to be the same, are you talking about the splitting of the kingdom of Israel and Judea? No. I mean that... Trump is going to be king, um, president okay. of the United States for his second term. Okay. A possibility, hopefully. It doesn't happen as the United States split in two, but you never know. Wait, so you believe Another that the United is, States is going to split in two if Trump does not a become president? of a civil war, martial law, because, you know, you can't appease um, um, corruption, and, uh, and, and absolutely cannot. Wow, Look that's a big statement. Look okay. Democrats appease these um, Black Lives Matter and... and um, and there's so many different groups, and they approach and went after those mayors and, and governors. So you can't appease them. You have to call for what it is. Wow. Why should people lose their lives and business, and, and, and then all of a sudden you appease them? No, no. That's not how God will um, run things. Maybe so you're imagine. definitely a Trump supporter. Our last yes, caller was a definitely a Biden supporter. <laughs> Biden He's on that West easy. Coast. You're on the East Coast. <laughs> yes. And then one more thing I'd like to add, that 
the United States interfered with so many diff- different um, countries' election, and especially Israel. And Biden knew about it. So measure for measure. Period. Dr. Mordechai Ben Menachem, do you want to comment on what Antonio said? Can I hang up? I think Thank you, Antonio, for your call. Thank you. I'm He's going to answer you off the air. Thank you so much for calling in. First of all, I think what he said is fascinating. I think it's, it's, it's very, very interesting to listen to what he had to say. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I cannot disagree with his opinions. I am loath to agree with his opinions. In other words, uh, I would say that uh, I would probably consider myself fearful to, to agree with his opinions. I think that um, the possibility of the United States splitting uh, somehow in, in some manner or other does exist. I would not want to try to um, quantify the, the chances of that happening, but I think he's right that the chance is there. And well, I think that every one of us should be fearful of that. You know, I'd like to I'd like to put another two cents in and say that if it goes the other way, that the same thing could happen. If Trump does in the end win, I can see, and I've said this before in the show, states like California, Oregon, Washington, the state, um, New York, uh, and other places on the East Coast that are very liberal leaning would also uh, easily, well, I wouldn't say easily, but, but could also split and make their own country as well. You know, secede from the union, basically. I'll tell you why I, just, I'll tell you why I don't quite agree with that. Um, and it's a slightly impolite, I agree. Um, I don't think the people... The, the coastal people, and I'm being very impolite, I, 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 I warn people ahead of time, I don't think they've got the courage to do that. I think the people that, in, in, if, you, if you look at the United States, this is an inaccurate view, of course, but if you look at the United States as the, the coast against the middle, and, and of course, again, that's totally inaccurate, but just as, a, just as a model, the people in the middle who are, really are American patriots, and they believe strongly in the concepts of patriotism, as do I, they have the courage of conviction to make that sort of a move. I do not believe the people on the coasts have the courage to do that. Okay, I hear you, and you have a point. However, I'd like to add that the people on the coast have already done something like that in that they are refusing. He's not my president. We're not going to listen to him. They established their own autonomous zones over there on the West and the Northern West coast there. Uh, They've already done things showing that they are refusing to take orders from the federal government. They don't want federal troops there. They were screaming and yelling. So, I don't know. I, I could see it happening. But let's move on because we don't know. We're just, we're, this is all conjuncture right now. What does the, uh, the American elections now have to do with Israel possibly going to new elections? Because I know that you didn't want to comment on that. Well, what, what I think is, is going on here is I, I think the, the American election was the, the, the Democrat establishment um, knowingly and with full malice of forethought attempted to steal the American election. Anyone can disagree with me. That's perfectly fine. I, I believe that that is, that is indeed what did, what did occur. Um, and I think that uh, 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 a great deal of evidence, a very, very strong evidence has been shown to illustrate that fact. Um, and I think the Democratic establishment, when I say democratic establishment, I'm not thinking about democracy. I'm thinking of the Democratic Party. So we don't, don't, please don't misunderstand what, what, my, what, my, uh, uh, what I'm referencing here. Um, I believe the, 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 the Democratic Party, the so-called deep state, and et cetera, whatever you want to, however you want to fashion it at the moment, um, they believe that the... Um, uh, um, um, lost the word in English. Um, the destiny of the United States and the destiny of Israel are intimately linked, and it scares the hell out of them. And they are willing to do almost anything to make certain that if Trump is switched out, pardon the uh, double quotation marks, so is Netanyahu. 
because it'll make for a smoother um it's just like having the Senate and the Congress both the same so they can pass their agendas much easier. Oh, it's my, yes, it's that, of course, but it's actually much more than that. Because as much as they scream and shout that they hate religion and they hate anything that deals with, with, with a, any belief system, um, uh, they're very frightened of, uh, uh, of, 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 of God. And they're aware that they can't really fight him no matter how much they try well that's why in communistic societies they had to kill god because god was above the state and the state had to be supreme whatever the government said that was supposed to be the ultimate and you listen to the government and that's what we're seeing taking place right now with all of these covid 19 restrictions that the government's putting on people and now they're talking about possible forced vaccinations, although I don't know if they'll force you. They can just manipulate you into taking it by restricting you that if you don't have the vaccine, you cannot go to school. If you don't have the vaccine, you cannot get on an airplane and travel. If you don't have the vaccine, you cannot go to any place that's public, that not on a bus, not on a train, not in a shopping mall, and basically coerce people, even though it's not the law, um, that you have to get a vaccine, they would basically twist their arm so that people will get the vaccine. What do you think? First of all, I think that you're right, and that the possibility does exist. I do not think that can happen here in Israel. Why? Um, Israelis are enormously... Um, Stubborn? Uh, uh, <laughs> ...independent-minded, and they don't take orders well. They take... They, they will be very disciplined if you, if you convince them that what you're saying makes sense. They'll be very disciplined. Some of the most... Uh, we, we saw in the, in the first lockdown, for instance, um, uh, uh, tremendous discipline, tremendous uh, um, uh, uh, um, uh, compliance, um, uh, cooperation compliance with everything that was that was requested. And people were very ready to do that. And there was there was very few complaints. And at that time, I mean, business people complained, of course, and they have the they had the right to do so. But at the end of the day, everyone did it and did it quietly. Israeli be, tend to be disciplined because we're accustomed to being shot at, and, you know. If you're, and if you're in a, in a in a situation of life and death, then you 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 realize that you have to have discipline. But there are limits to that discipline, and we've seen that. Uh, and how, how how can I prove what I'm saying is correct? Well, if if that was not the case, then the manipulations of the of the of the mainline media here in Israel would have kept the, the Labour Party. In, in, in power since the beginning of the state, as they tr tried very hard to do for quite a long time, and they, and they completely failed to do that. So there are limitations to how far the Israelis can be pushed. Hmm. All right. Well, we're going to hold it here. When we get back, we're going to be talking more about this, and I'm going to, if I remember to, I'm going to share it with you my uh my understanding about globalism and how the United States and Israel both are a huge enemy of it and why. Don't go anywhere, everybody. We're going to be right back. You're listening to the Tamar Yano Show here at IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. You can call in and weigh in on the issues. This is a live show if you're listening on Sunday afternoon, Israel time between 4 to 5 p.m. or between 9 to 10 a.m. U.S. Eastern time. We're going to be right back. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. This is Shai Bentico, and each week I'll be webcasting to you from Judea, origin of the word Jew, a people besieged and beleaguered in every generation. Nazi Germany's but a memory, but in its place the world invented the phantom Palestinians as this generation's internationally authorized Jew killers. Tune in for a different slant on life in Israel, Phantom Nation, every Monday. Hi, I'm Rabbi David Aaron. The soul basics are the most profound, the most essential, and yet often the most neglected in our education. Join me for Soul Talk on Israel's News Talk Radio and discover the secrets to love, spiritual growth, and personal power.
All right. We are back here at the Tamar Yona Show on IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. And we're talking about why, uh, why the panic. In other words, that there seems to be some type of urgency that with uh, the perceived Biden win in the U.S. elections, they want to now oust Bibi here in Israel because they want to have their agenda done. And our guest is Dr. Mordechai Ben Menachem. And I was just telling you, Mordechai, I wanted to tell you in the last segment that I see uh, that with the, the globalism, that uh, the threat of globalism, as you rightly said in the last segment, was people who are God-fearing people, people who have religion, people who believe in God. And we all know that if you believe in God, then God's law is above man's law. And that's why in the communistic systems, like in the Soviet Union um, and other places where there's communism and, and heavy socialism, they want to basically kill God. So the state becomes supreme in whatever the state says. But they, of course, market it and package it in a much nicer way. Instead of saying the state, they say the collective. The, you know, uh, all of us free workers are, are uh, what do they call them, uh, colleague? No. Uh, what, what are they? Proletariat. No, yeah, but no, but there was a word uh, 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 that they used to comrade? use. Comrade, yes. <laughs> yes, we're all comrades, right? And it reminds me of this pandemic with the, with the uh, corona saying that, you know, in the beginning of the coronavirus, we were all in this together. And now the memes go that are going around. And now their governments are telling us to tattle and, and rat on our neighbors that they have more than six people in their house <laughs> for Thanksgiving, right? It's crazy what's going on in the world. Um, and I see that uh, with the, with uh, Israel, with being a Jewish, defining itself as a Jewish state and not a state, not as a state of all of its people and the United States that has its constitution. And in that, the second amendment where the average citizen can own weapons, can have a gun, can you have firearms? This is a direct threat to globalism and socialism, communism, which is the agenda that the left has always been pushing for. So from that, I'm going to let you take it. Well, I, first of all, I completely agree with you. I mean, but but, but I, I want to take it on one step farther here. I think there's a basic problem that people are not perceiving or maybe even, even avoiding. And, and let's look at it from the standpoint of your so-called average everyday young person okay uh, what does he go he looks around himself and he sees well wait a minute um here's harvard i want to get go off and get a good education if i go to harvard it's going to cost me tens of thousands of dollars a year and these guys have 40 billion dollars in, in 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 reserve funds and in an endowment and they still are promoting a garbage education um so the university system is basically corrupt. Okay, so they look at politics and say, well, the politicians are basically corrupt. And they look at lawyers, and lawyers are liars. And they look at journalists and say, well, journalists are even more liars than, than lawyers today. And they look at the, the, the financial, the financial uh, uh, systems and they say, well, these guys are all a bunch of crooks. And, and they say, wait a minute, what, what, wait a minute, what, what, what's going on here? And, and the United States has the, the, the most powerful and the most honest, in my personal opinion, um, uh, armed forces in the history of the world, and they've been battling the so-called war on drugs for 50 years, and the drug problem continues to grow, and piracy on the high seas continues to grow, and counterfeiting continues to grow, and every crime you can think of continues to grow. Well, if I was 20 years old, I actually was at one time, but people, people might not be aware of that. Very cute. A long time ago, though. Um, if I was 20 years old and I looked around at the world and I said, wait a minute, the whole, the whole thing is falling apart. Well, it's perfectly legitimate for young people to look for an alternative and say, look at socialism and say, well, wait a minute. What? And, and we tell them, the, the older people, tell them, well, socialism, every place that it's been tried has been a horrible failure. Not only did it fail miserably, but it failed in terms of, of, of horrible suffering to to tens of millions and the young people are confused they don't know what's really going on they don't understand what other people want for them all they can see around them is corruption and failure and they're not wrong and so they're groping they're grasping at straws on the high seas 
and they don't know what to what to believe in anymore. And particularly, as you said just a moment ago, particularly because they've been told all along that believing in God is primitive and is is, is for people who don't really have, have have any understanding of the world. Well, if I can pre present my opinion, believing in God is the only way to begin to understand the world. And they're right that they're that we are all surrounded by corruption and the. The entire Western world is a failure. They're correct. Europe has destroyed itself. It's a bunch of old ladies arguing with one another about who's going to be the oldest lady in the round. And the United States, as we saw in this uh, over this past year, is not a great deal better, most unfortunately. So yes, globalism is the 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 the, the current name of the problem. But the problems are deep set and they're there. And no one is really offering a solution right now. What they are offering is they're saying people like the the unmen of the United Nations and the, the and the uh, 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 weirdos of the of the European Union, so called union. They're saying can keep on saying that the, the biggest problem in the world is Israel. Well, so Mordechai, in the last uh, few minutes that we have, I want you again, just for our listeners' sake, to put together the co the connection of why uh, the elections between our country and America are intertwined with the left uh, put trying to put Biden in and uh, the left trying to get Netanyahu, Netanyahu out and Benny Gantz or someone else in. Well, again, uh, 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 first of all, Benny Gantz is not a, is not the point. He's nobody specifically wants Benny Gantz. He's a puppet. He's a nothing. So is so is Lapid. He's a puppet. He's a, a nothing. He, he's a uh, Lapid has never accomplished anything in his life. Gantz has been a failure in almost everything he tried. Um, he failed as 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 the um, uh, um, as the head of the armies. He failed as 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 defense minister. He's failed in in almost everything he's done, um, he's not the point. The point is to get anything, anybody except Bibi, because the truth is, Bibi Netanyahu is a genius in strategy. He understands what's going on. The the these these the, this this enormous accomplishment of the Abraham Accords is first of all, first of all, the 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 the, the tremendous um, uh, uh, accomplishment is. First of all, Bibi. I mean, he's been working on it for ten years now, and of course, I, I wouldn't would not for a moment belittle the help that we've gotten from from Trump. Quite the opposite, it was it's fantastic, but uh, 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 and it couldn't have been accomplished under somebody like like Obama or or, or Biden, uh, because they would constantly interfere. They don't want peace. Peace is a terrible thing if what you're trying to do is conquer the world. Peace is the last thing they want. So that's why it's so important to get rid of Netanyahu now when they perceive that they have the chance because of what they did with the corruption of the elections in the United States. And I don't think anybody really has a doubt that the elections there were corrupt. The only doubt is whether it will be proven or not and who will actually stand on the stage on the 20th of January. And you believe that also people in the uh, active in getting the Democratic Party into the White House are, are going to try to cheat in the Israeli elections as well as we tally up votes in any new elections? That's what you're saying? I have absolutely no doubt about that, yes. And just want for our listeners, again, tell us why. Give us some proof. Again, uh, uh, the, 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 the software programs, the software systems that are called Hammer and Scorecard, were developed by the CIA specifically to interfere in foreign elections in foreign countries. This is a well-known fact. This is not something that somebody has cooked up. And they were taken over by Obama. They were taken out of the CIA in 2009. And in 2016, after the elections, before Trump was inaugurated, they disappeared from the White House. And no one knows how or where. This is clear what is going on here. This is not a conspiracy. This is not a theory. These are basic facts. 
Uh, do you want to say a word? I'm going to throw this out in left field uh, about some of the anti-Semitism that we're seeing taking place in the United States. Does that have any connection with anything? It's all engineered. Meaning? For it's, our it's, it's, it's intentional. People know exactly what they're doing. The, the, these people that, that uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the media, that they, they have no knowledge of, of real professional journalism, but they do know how to influence people. They are all followers of Goebbels. I'm just looking at an article here on Arut Sheva that's entitled, You and Your Prayer Book Can Get Off. And basically, it says here, an Orthodox Jewish woman was thrown, she said she was thrown off a flight on Delta Airlines after the staff claimed she prayed without a mask. The woman denies the claim and she cites anti-Semitism. She put her head down to look at her prayer book and read her prayers when the, when the stewardess uh, or the flight attendant uh, uh, said that she claimed that she wasn't wearing a mask. The woman said she was. She wanted to prove it, um, but they started yelling at her and they made her disboard the plane. Any, okay, I mean, this so, is not the okay. media, but I mean, I, this is just already from just companies and from people. Do do you see any connection at all with the left? Yes or no? All We're, of, music's all of, on. All of this is, is is engineered. All of this is how do you say it in English? Um, uh, incitement. You know, if you incite people enough, they believe. They believe. They believe anything. All right. Well, we have to leave it there. Thank you so much, Dr. Mordechai Ben Menachem, and thank you all for listening. Israel News Talk Radio's chat room. Just click the orange button at the top of the IsraelNewsTalkRadio.home page, log in as yourself or an anonymous guest, and join in on the fun. You'll meet other listeners from all over the world who listen to Israel News Talk Radio, and you can make new friends. Israel News Talk Radio's chat room. It's the closest you can get to being in the studio with us. We love listening to Israel News Talk Radio. Where can you get the inside news on Israel? At Israel News Talk Radio, we're dedicated to sharing Israel's inside story with the world by providing our listeners with news on Israeli politics, current affairs, and Israeli Jewish culture. The Israel News Talk Radio homepage also provides you, the listener, with useful information at your fingertips with scrolling news headlines, weather, currency exchange, Shabbat candle lighting times, and so much more. Our radio programming is always accessible and on demand. We operate absolutely free of charge for everyone, everywhere. If you love what we do, partner with us now by becoming an Israel News Talk Radio supporter. With your support, you'll be inscribed on our Israel News Talk Radio Wall of Fame. There's nothing like us in the world. Be part of something great. Israel News Talk Radio. Straight talk from Israel. If you love Israel News Talk Radio, then you'll love our Facebook page. We keep you up to date on what's happening in Israel, plus little surprise treasures that we don't share on the radio. Go now to follow us on Facebook. Just look for the Israel News Talk Radio Facebook page. And don't forget to subscribe and follow us by clicking on the like button. We post great stuff there that you'll want to share. Israel News Talk Radio on Facebook and Israel News Radio on Twitter. News, opinion, and more. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio.